and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to make an HTTP POST request in Airtable. So HTTP POST requests are used to send user-created data from a client to a server. So for example, when you submit a form online or upload a photo on Instagram, the website or application uses a POST request to transfer that data to their servers. So most web services use POST requests to create new data on their servers rather than updating them. You can use POST requests in Airtable to send data from your Airtable base to an API. So for example, you could upload new contacts to your CRM tool using their API, or you can also import data from APIs. So some APIs require you to use post requests to fetch data instead of get requests, which you can learn about more here as well. And this is just on our datafetcher.com website, where we have a full length blog on this exact topic, if you prefer to learn that way. And it is useful to get this up for this tutorial, as we're going to come here and copy some information when we get to this step. So we'll head back over to our Airtable base and here we're going to install the data fetcher extension. So you just select that extensions option up in the top right hand corner, select add an extension. And then again, up in the top right hand corner, you have a search bar. We're going to search for data fetcher, nice and simple, and then select the add button. Here, select add extension. And now you can either create a free data fetcher account or you can simply continue with Google. So now we're going to select create your first request. Under application, you want to select custom. And now we're going to retitle this request to something meaningful, like simple post request, just like so. Then you'll see this method option from that drop down menu, you want to select post. And then for the URL, like I mentioned before, we're going to simply copy this over from the blog post. And that just reads as HTTP colon forward slash forward slash HTTP org forward slash post. But if you are sending data to another API, you'll need to find out the URL they use to make post requests. Then below Below this, we're going to select the body tab over here in the right hand corner, and we're going to head back to the blog to copy that piece of text as well. There's a nice simple copy button here and paste it into this input box, just like so. So at this point, you can use values from your Airtable data in the request body just here using this plus symbol on the right hand side of the input box. Then as you can see, you can reference to your Airtable base. Great. So you'll use the body tab to input the information you want to send to an API. We're using JSON as the request body, as you can see here, but other APIs may require a different one. So you can check out the Data Fetcher Help Center to see the list of supported request body types and how to use them. And again, this is a link on our blog as well. Now we're going to select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. Now we'll arrive to our response field mapping screen. And this is where you can decide which fields you would like to have imported into your Airtable base. So for each field that you want to import, you can choose between creating a new field or directing to an existing fields. And you can also change its data type. So in this case, we're going to import the fields containing the data we sent in the request body. So every API has different response fields. So you'll need to read their documentation to know what fields to import. So in order to organize what we need here, we're going to simply turn off all of these fields. So select the deselect all button in the top right hand corner, then click on JSON names. So you can find this either by scrolling and here it is, or you can search it in the search field, just like so. That will pop up, turn that field on by clicking on it. And this automatically maps to a new field titled with the same name. Now you can select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. As you can see, this field is now being created. Select show output table, and you can close this little window over on the right hand side. Now some APIs will not return any response data for post requests. In this scenario, you can use data fetchers no output mode, which again, we have a link on our website just down here at the bottom. So hopefully today you have learned how to make an HTTP post request in Airtable. But if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us here at datafetcher.com, where, like I mentioned before, there is that full length blog as well, if you prefer to learn that way. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn today. I really hope you have a good one.